You've probably seen pictures of beautifully assembled cheese boards, and you may have wondered how to make one. You may have also wondered why they're often called charcuterie boards. Charcuterie is technically a display of cold cooked meats, and the term has become synonymous with cheese boards that often include fruit and nuts, olives, and spreads. And the great thing about these boards is that they're really flexible, so we can add a few unexpected ingredients to make them healthier and more satisfying. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, we'll need to gather a few basic supplies. For the foundation, we'll need a board, tray, or a platter. Wood and marble are popular, but you could use a rim baking sheet, a clean piece of slate. Today, I'm gonna to use my large wood cutting board. We'll also need a few utensils for serving. You could use specialty cheese knives, but you can also use whatever you have in your kitchen, a small sharp knife, a butter knife, Small forks and spoons are helpful as well. I often use my kids' old baby spoons. Small bowls and dishes will anchor the board and they'll also contain loose ingredients like dips, olives, and nuts. You can look through your cabinets for old candy dishes, ramekins, even flat jars will work. You can use whatever you have on hand and they don't need to match. Start by adding structure to the board with the dishes. For filling protein, we're using two kinds of hummus, red beet, and deviled eggs. We're also going to add nuts and olives to the board. You'll want to space the dishes out for visual appeal. For our cheeses, we're using brie, manchego, and cheddar. A combination of hard and soft cheeses is nice. For harder cheeses like cheddar, you can pre-slice or cut into cubes if you prefer. You can also place the blocks throughout the board and get them started with a few slices. For the meats, we're using some healthier options, including some low sodium ham and some lean all natural roast beef. We're also using some turkey jerky. For the sliced meats, you'll want to roll or fold them and then we'll space those over the board. The crackers, there's so many wholesome options these days, from seeded to oat crackers, many of which are gluten free, to whole grain, or even using some pumpernickel sticks. Then you'll want to nestle those crackers around the cheese and the dips. For our vegetables, we're using a colorful assortment of snap peas, carrot chips, mini cucumbers, and mini bell peppers. When you cut the bell peppers in half, they're great for scooping the hummus. I like to cut the cucumbers in half too. They're good for dipping and also great for general snacking. The fresh vegetables will add contrast to the meats and cheeses on the board, and they also add vibrant color throughout. For additional color and natural sweetness, we're going to add grapes and then mix it up a little bit with some clementines. I like to break them in small pieces so they're easier to pick up. And then we'll use them to distribute color throughout the board. The last step is filling in any gaps on the board. You can do this with more fruits and vegetables, I'm gonna add some dried apricots and figs and a little bit of dark chocolate for a treat. When your board is finished, you can add your cheese knives, some little spoons, and then your guests can help themselves as they admire your beautiful creation. The charcuterie board can be assembled earlier in the day, covered and refrigerated. The cheeses should be served at room temperature, so you'll wanna get the board out of the refrigerator about 30 minutes before serving. This is your board, so feel free to add a few unexpected ingredients even some seasonal fruits and vegetables or holiday decor. Just have fun with it. Your guests are going to love it.